Hello everybody, Tim Norris here, aka Grey Elephant. And Carmen Norris. And welcome to a live play whoosh, preview of Draco Magi by Robert Burke Games. You're going to see us fight over and acquire a battlefield so you can see how this game plays in real time. And also in the meantime, look for our little boop bubbles to pop up and we're going to give our thoughts of what's occurring in the battlefield and of what we think of the game as well. So keep an eye out for them. Okay, here we are at the start of the game and what we have done is we have pulled from the location deck here three from the bottom of the deck and we have laid them out here in front of Carmen and I. Carmen being the gold dragons, me being the green dragons. We have the frozen tundra, we have the dark lands, and we have the Firelands. And if you look closer down at the bottom of the Firelands, we have a description of what these locations do for us. For instance, this one says here that you get a plus two ranged attack, two red dragons, and that the battlefield cannot be frozen. Now that may come into play during this round. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, over here is our advanced battle deck. Um, and we have each have already have done this. Uh, we've each drawn three cards off the top of this. We've selected one to keep. One to give our opponent and one to discard. We've already performed them duties, so those cards have already went into our battle decks and shuffled in. This has been reshuffled as well. Now what's going to happen is, is that the first player marker, which is me, will go because I'm the oldest, it says. Um, because neither one of us has summoned a dragon lately, I don't believe. And that's that's the restrictions and the rules in yeah. the book. So. <laughs> so I will be first player. So what I will do is I will shuffle up my dragons and I am going to draw eight dragons and then we will begin play. So... Wow, I love this artwork. I mean, on the back of the card, you've got a dragon that's like, you know, in mid-battle. And so that's really cool. But I'm glad that they kept just the heads of the dragons on the actual cards that you play. Because I really enjoy seeing the detail on these. And also, it's not so distracting if they were in the middle of battle. I want you to look through them real fast and see which ones look the best. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my acid or black dragon... Uh, here at this location at the Darklands. And the reason that I am going to do that is because the Black Dragon, if you look on the bottom, it says that he spews acid onto the battlefield. Your opponent loses one melee combat card of their choice for each Black Dragon present at the start of melee combat. Right now we are in the kind of ranged combat mode, so Carmen could try to place a card there to try to defeat my Black Dragon. But before she does that, let me explain why I placed my Black Dragon here. If you look at the Dark Lands card, it says, plus one shield for black and purple dragons. So, my Black Dragon is going to get a bonus plus one on his shield, so that will allow me then to defend three times with him versus just two times. So, if she does try to attack him, he's going to be able to dodge, hopefully. Carmen? So, I don't see any point in trying to use a ranged attack against him if he's going to get that many shields, so I'm just going to play my Silver Dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, and at the bottom of the Silver Dragon, it says... Reflective Scales. There can be no ranged attacks on the Silver Dragon. Okay, so what I'm going to do is place another Black Dragon at this location, oh which means, once okay. again, um, now, the Black Dragon does not have any ranged attacks, so even if he did, he could not attack her dragon over there anyway. So, Carmen? Uh, now, I'm going to play my Purple Dragon, because he gets a plus one shield too, though I don't know what good it does him. Because he's <laughs> going to be, he's, he goes underneath the yes. card. He has stealth. You may place a purple dragon under any dragon you have already placed on the battlefield. Uh, so I'm going to place them under. Also, if I win this gem, I'm going to get to draw one advanced battle card. So I really want to win this one so I can get that bonus. Yep. He's going to go under my I, silver dragon. I love the purple dragons. I absolutely love them. Okay, what I'm going to do then is place my... Now, mind you, we could be spreading out to the other two. The problem is, is that we know placing into here somebody's going to attack immediately. This is why we're being, you know, a bit cautious. And I'm going to place my purple dragon underneath okay. my black one as well. So, Carmen, it is your turn again. I am going to place my Battle Fury dragon. Oh, okay. Now, that dude's a, a tough dude. Uh, why don't yeah. you explain why? Okay. Well, first of all, he has four melee, which is tough to begin with. Which we'll get and, into that in the melee combat. And mm -hmm. then his Battle Fury says this... Battle Dragon requires two hits to destroy. Mm -hmm. Tilt the Battle Dragon card after the first hit and discard after the second hit. So oh. 
I really want to win this one because of my purple dragon there. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put the battle. Yeah, he's going to be a tough one to, to, to defeat. The battle dragon's awesome. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We've got the fire lands, which is going to get a plus two range to a red dragon. And then we've got the frozen tundra, which is going to get a plus one to all ranged attacks. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is play my silver dragon uh. at the frozen tundra, which makes it, uh, makes it to where she cannot attack. Uh, with a ranged attack and I did that on purpose to hopefully be able to keep my dragon from being killed before we go into the melee combat. Okay. I think I will play... I think my... you will die. You want to play something there so I can hit you with my red dragon. That's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play my black dragon there. Ah, okay? That's funny that you didn't play your black dragon there but you want to get that purple one through as well. Yes. Is. Okay. Awesome. So you played the black dragon, which is going to spew acid on there, and I'm going to get a negative one. So why don't we do this? I will play my green dragon mm. and see if I could possibly destroy your black dragon. No. So here's what happens with the green dragon. Down at the bottom, he says poison breath. He will reduce the shield value of the target dragon by minus one when the green dragon makes a ranged attack. All right, so the frozen tundra says... Uh, well, hang on. Let's let's keep looking at this green dragon. Yes. So on the left-hand side of his card, it shows a one underneath the like fire look. What that means is that I'm going to draw one card from my combat deck to be able to see if I could possibly hit this black dragon. If we look at the Frozen Tundra, though, it says plus one to all ranged attacks. So that means that I will actually be drawing two cards instead of just one. Now, if we look at Carmen's black dragon, we look at the top of his card where he has got a two. Now, that means he will be drawing two combat cards to try to defend himself from my 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 ranged attack. However, because my green dragon did a poison breath attack, he will only be drawing one. So here we go. I will flip over my card and I have done one successful hit so far because all we're going to do is look on the uh, right side for me to see the, um, the mark right there and that shows like a pow symbol and what that means is, is that I have hit once. However, Carmen, why don't you hold your card up there and show you what you have done. Because she has the shields portion right here has that. She has matched me. So that is the only card she can be allowed to draw. So I am going to draw one myself again. And I have missed. So your dragon will survive yes. that attack. You <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky duck. You lucky dog. I can't believe you uh, you survived that. Okay. So now what am I going to do? I don't know. Die. You could die. I could try to shoot your green dragon. You could try to shoot my green dragon, but that'd be totally uncool. Okay. My green dragon. Oh no! So okay, okay, so her green dragon has the poison breath. So yes. frozen tundra. We're going through the whole thing again, and uh, so that means I draw one card. She will draw two. So here we go. Um, I have one shield. I have one fireball. Oh no! Oh, three okay. fireballs. So three fireballs does destroy my dragon, and he will go. Oh, he he's been destroyed, and he will leave the battlefield. Thanks, Carmen. That was really cool of you. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. I know. <laughs> In a not so cool way. Okay. All right. So I will play an additional um, silver dragon there with reflective scales, so that he cannot be attacked with range attacks. So Carmen, it is your turn again. Okay. Hmm. See, now if I play uh, a dragon here, mm -hmm. Tim might decide just to give up on this one and place his dragons over here. Possibly. So I've got to decide. I'm one dragon here. down there, that now. Yeah. I mean, you're a dragon ahead of me now, though, and that, that, um, that really stinks. Well, this is kind of a waste, but I'm going to do it anyway and go ahead and place my red dragon there. Yep. I was waiting yeah. for you to place something over there for me because now I'm going to play now, my red dragon. Now his red dragon okay. isn't wasted because he gets to shoot me. All right, so here's okay. what's going to happen is, is that on uh, my red dragon says fireball. If a ranged attack succeeds, the red dragon may attack a second dragon on this battlefield. So in a sense, he's a uh, kind of wasted. Yeah. But I'm sensing she has another red dragon in her hand, and she's trying to force me over here. Okay. But let's see. Hang on. Um, real quick, if we look onto the left side of my red dragon card, he shows that he'll shoot one red fire or one fireball. However, he is fighting in the firelands, and down at the bottom of the firelands, it says plus two ranged attack to red dragon. So. In other words, this guy's going to shoot three times. Okay, at the top of the red fire, uh, dragon's card, it shows a shield of two. So Carmen will flip two cards, and I will flip three. So here we My go. My shields. I've got two hits. One. I've got three hits. No. And your dragon will be dead, because I have a total I of only four hits. One. So bye-bye, right. red dragon, but I'm pretty confident she probably has another one of her own. So we'll see real quick. Hmm. 
I think I might just have another red dragon. Yeah, I sense that one coming. <laughs> okay, so you will flip three and I will flip two. I have one shield. No fireball. I have two shields. <gasps> no oh. fireball. And oh. I live. No fireballs out of three cards. <laughs> You can see this is where luck plays heavily into the game. I mean, I drew three cards and I just didn't have any attack, and there's nothing you can do about that. My Elder Skells, he is my Brass Dragon, and I'm going to place him over on this location. Guess what I was going to place? Uh, probably an Elder Skells Brass Dragon. Ta-da! Yep. Oh, wow. So, okay, the reason that we're placing them here is because we already have dragons with the metallic. I, well, no, you do not, actually, but yes. I do. Oh, no, you don't. I thought he was silver. Nope, you don't. Oops. I do. All right. Um, and the, down at the bottom of the Elder Skells, it says increase the melee value of the all brass dragons to four if two or three metallic dragons are present on this battlefield, including the brass. So, so his uh, claw mark over there on the right-hand side of his card shows a 2. That will actually be increased to 4 because now we are going into the melee so combat. I so I have just wasted my brass dragon by not paying attention. And I the font and style of these dragons' names are too hard to read on the side of the cards. They need to be bigger and they need to be more displayed. We understand why they put them on the side, but you're either going to have to move them or make them larger so people can see what you're talking about. Okay, so what's going to happen is because I am first player, I'm going to pick a battlefield that we are going to begin okay. melee combat on. Um, I don't want to pick this one quite yet. Uh, this one would be a crapshoot. I'm going to go with this one here because I believe I have the advantage. So what we're going to do is look on the right-hand side of each one of our three cards that we have here. Um, I have my Elder Skills, which will be a four. I have my Silver, I'm sorry, yes, my Silver and my Silver, which are both three. So I will draw then a total of ten cards. Okay, so my symbols for melee combat have three, two, and two. And I believe you do have a black one there, am I correct? Yes, so okay. you are going to have to discard one of your cards. So the black one will force me to discard one of my cards, of my choice, thank goodness, out of my hand. And we will begin melee combat here in just a second. Why don't you tell us which one you discard and why? Well, I will, possibly, if I once I make my decision. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I will um, discard this claw because the claws are typically... Um, these are the more basic ones, um, claw and bite, single, uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll get rid of that one. I'm going to keep my other ones, uh, especially the ones that are good for defense, <laughs> um, okay. and, uh, the other ones that I feel like could possibly sneak through her defense. So now what we're going to do is each of us are going to select an attack card, and we're going to begin attacking each other. Uh, I'm going to start pretty light here because I want to test her defense, and I'm going to come at you with a claw. It is. Brass dragon against brass dragon. What is going to happen? You See. will die. You will I think die. I will defend with one claw. Okay, so as okay. long as I played one claw attack, she was able to defend with one claw attack. So now she is the uh, attacker this time, which actually that will switch here in just a second. Um, she goes from uh, defender now to attacker, and she will come at me with something. Come at me, bro. All Let's right. see what you got hmm. here. I don't want to do too much because... <laughs> well, they're going to find out why we don't want to do too much here real soon. All right. Let's see. I'm going to try... I like shuffling my cards repeatedly because there's times when somebody can pull a card out of your hand, and I don't want them to think that I've got some sort of system over here and I've got my stuff lined up. I like keeping them random as much as I'm I possibly can. I'm going to go can. after you with a magic attack. Okay, so a magic attack... Um, this one is pretty special, and um, I'm amazed that she didn't try to combo with this one, uh, because what the magic attack does is that it's going to allow you, when you use it as an attack, that you can draw up cards equal to the yeah. number of cards so you play. So if I would have played my, my magic with my claw, then I would have been able to... Okay, and the way that she would have done that is that if we look on the bottom of the magic card, it's got like a star, okay? And what this means is that it can be comboed with other cards that have the star at the bottom. And you can play all of these cards in one big boom, you know, down right in front of you. Um, however, you don't want to get too crazy with this because... There are cards called Flight, and Flight will allow you just to just do that. You will fly away as such. I okay. played my Flight card, which means that I flew over her magic attack, so therefore I took no damage, and I get to draw another card and add it to my hand. If I remember correctly, is that what it says at the bottom of yours? Yes, when used as an attack. 
Both players draw new battle cards equal to the number of cards they played on this turn. Awesome. So if Tim would have defended with a magic card, though, it says do not draw cards if played as defense. Right. He defended with a flight, so he gets to draw a card. So where she kind of messed up with this in a, to a degree, not, not to, to a high degree, yes. is that you want to try to combine your magic attack with a bind card <clears throat> along with several other cards because a bind will keep my dragon from flying away, dodging, the magic is going to allow you to draw up cards, and then all the other attacks are going to pummel me to where I'm going to have to play cards out of my hand. However, if I play a magic card at any time with those defensive cards, I don't get to draw up any new cards at all where she would. So um, I think that was kind of premature on her to try to play so much. Or uh, to play that by itself. I don't think that was a good idea. I don't think I had another star in my hand at the time. I will still say that it wasn't a good idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to play is... Hang on. Uh-oh. He's reading something. This All right, can't so be good. I am going to play a Claw Ambush. A Claw Ambush no! says at the bottom that uh, when used as an attack, the attacking player may randomly choose one card from the defender's battle cards, which must be immediately discarded. So hopefully I pick a good one. Oh, yes! She does not have her flight card anymore, so she will not be able to just fly away from this attack. No! Okay. But she possibly could have a second flight. I think we each have two in our starting decks and possibly could draw more from the advance. So, Carmen, you have a claw, one claw attack coming at you. One claw attack coming at me. I think this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to retreat. Okay, so it is a bite or retreat. Why don't you read down in the text and okay. explain what May happens. attack with or defend against one bite or. Instead of discarding a dragon, you may retreat. Move the losing dragon to another battlefield in play. The battlefield must have less than three dragons okay. present. So she's going to move her Elder Skills over to this battlefield now, which in a way still helped me try to win this. But at the same time, she didn't technically lose a dragon, so that's great. Because uh, she still has all her cards in her hand. But uh, he was probably going to win this anyway, because he has a lot more battle cards than me. So. Yes, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely do. All right. All right, so Carmen, it is your turn to attack back. What is your plan here? I am going to attack you with... with uh, two bites. Okay, so two bites jump, coming jump, jump, at jump. me. And... I will play, oops, let me move this one over, sorry about that. I will play my Bite Twice card, and uh, what this means is that I can attack or defend against two Bites, so okay. therefore I am safe. But now I am going to come at you with mm -hmm. a Magic and a Claw. So I'm shooting you with a Magic and a Claw, which will allow me then to draw two cards back up in my hand. But let's see if you could try to fly away or defend against this. Okay, well, I can defend one claw. Okay, so she can defend one claw, but the magic will get through and hit her. You will still be allowed. You will still be allowed to draw one card. Uh, yes, because I you did not defend one with card. Magic. His magic card lets me draw one card. Uh, I was hit once, so my green dragon goes away. Bye bye, green dragon. We ain't gonna miss you. Okay, so I'm going to. Bite you, take that. Um, I'm going to defend against that bite, no problem. All right. And uh, you got one card left in your hand, correct? Yes, I do. So we will bite twice, and I'm sure it's probably a flight, but we'll see. Woo! It is a flight. Go fly away. <laughs> you can't get me. So that means she defended. Right. However, she has no attack cards now. So what's going to happen at this moment is, is that I'm still going to continue playing attack cards and hope that she cannot uh, defend against my attacks. One claw. So she Let's can see. draw one card off the top of her deck. If she wants a bind. So therefore, my claw did get through. It destroyed her last dragon. Therefore, I have now won this battlefield. The purpose of winning a battlefield is, is that you're trying to collect the gems that are on the battlefields. And if you collect three of the same color, you win. If you collect three different colors, you win. Or if you collect four total gems. And so now I will take my dragons and discard them over to the side. Carmen now is going to be the first player. And she is going to pick which battlefield that she wishes to win. Okay, so that gave you a pretty good taste of the game there. Uh, we was able to use uh, defensive cards in flight. We was able to use magic. We was able to bind our opponents down so they couldn't fly away. You was able to retreat one of your dragons, which yeah. was a pretty good strategic move, given I don't think you was going to keep... Uh, be able to beat me on this location anyways. No, um, uh, and if, you, if we would have finished out the round for you, uh, you would have seen that... I was able to get the two other locations. That's why it wasn't important for you guys to see the rest of it. <laughs> uh, you were able to see the advanced battle cards being played out and how powerful they can be. 
Uh, a lot of cool stuff, but here's the thing, you guys didn't really get to see all of it, and there is still a lot of good stuff in this game that uh, really you guys get to just anticipate of what's going to be. Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about the game itself, though. Enough of that, where you beat me on two locations. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the game itself. Yeah. Um, I would have to say I love the theme. I mean, I'm a big dragon nerd. I mm -hmm. love looking at the, the artwork with the heads of the mm -hmm. dragons. Beautiful, and, beautiful. And then, you know, on the other side, you've got a dragon in flight. Or it the back like of the cards. Combat. Yeah, the back yes, of the cards look really, really cool, too. really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I love the theme. And i got to say, my favorite part is actually placing my dragons on the locations mm -hmm. because they actually have, uh, you know, the text that is going to affect which dragons you're going to place there, and it's going to affect your ranged combat, it might affect your melee combat. Mm -hmm. There's even a dragon, we didn't show you this, that can flip the location over, and then you might have something different. So yeah. uh, I really enjoy that strategic aspect of the game of placing your dragons. Yeah, and I think um, this is the part where I think a lot of the luck plays in, too, is whenever, and this is where I think the game has a lot of luck and strategy, is where you're doing the, 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 the ranged attacks, because even in the demonstration, you right. you flipped, I think, three cards and didn't hit on a single one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I had the three blank cards. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I was able to defend, and that's where the luck is. You have no control over that. Right. Um, but uh, talking about what other things could have happened is is that there is a dragon that whenever he is successful at hitting with the ranged attack he gets to take an advanced battle card from the, uh, the, 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 the pile and put it on top of your combat deck right and this is really cool because this is a part of this strategy that we were talking about because as your opponent if I see that you destroyed one of my dragons with the ranged attack and you gain that battle card I am then now going to automatically want to attack you, not necessarily thinking I'm going to destroy your dragon, but also because I don't want you to have that advanced battle card going into the melee combat. Yeah. I want that discard. Uh, the so. advanced battle card is going to help you out in ranged oh, combat yeah. or melee combat, but if you use it for defense, it's kind of wasted. So so your opponent's going to want to try to get rid of that and then attack you. So luck on drawing the cards when it does come to the ranged combat, but strategy on placing your dragons where they need to be and also when am I going to attack my opponent and where and flip and battle you know the, the battlefields and all that stuff exactly. so that's the balance mm -hmm. now the melee combat I actually like more than what I think you, you like ranged and I like the melee or you like the placement I like the melee combat right, right. the reason I like the melee combat is I think this is where the cat and mouse of the game comes into play if you watched what we did we didn't create a whole big chain of combos automatically and the reason is because you saw what could happen your opponent plops down a flight card, flies away, and you're like, and ah! Then you've wasted, yeah. you know, three, you, four cards. You're, yeah. you're down now. So you want to have more cards than your opponent, obviously. That's the trick. So that's why you want so much melee. Right. But you don't want to waste them. So that's why I play a claw. Let's just test your defense. Let's see what you got. You defended the claw. That's fine. I don't care. Then, you know, you come at me with a magic. Can I defend the magic? Yeah, I'll pop down a magic, whatever, you know. But now, if I have another magic card, I'm going to think he probably doesn't. So I'm going to feel I was gonna more say. comfortable playing that. And, and the whole cat and mouse is, is that I want my opponent to use those flight cards. Use them flight cards, get them out of your hand so that I think that there's an opening. She only got two flight cards in your deck, I believe, but you can get some from the advanced battle deck as right. well. And you surprised me that in our game before yeah, this. Yeah, because I had three flight cards. She had three cards. of them, and I, yeah. I, I got both of hers out of her, they were in her discard. I laid down this huge combo, flink, flew away, and I was like, no! <laughs> and you ended up winning that battlefield because of it. Now, there's also luck in the melee, though, too, and the reason is because of some of the places we're fighting, like the dungeon. Yeah. You and I were fighting in the dungeon that one time, and speaking of the flight cards, you can't fly in the dungeon to, to, to dodge, so I ended up accidentally drunk. Well, not accidentally, it just it happened. I drew three flight cards for my melee, and, and there was just nothing I could do. So that was just luck right there, you know? Right. I, I just had a bad hand. So you were stuck with cards that were really useless to you. Yeah. 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 And, and that's another aspect. Reminds me of Smash Up. I don't think it happens as often. But it does happen. Yeah, I think um, your reference to Smash Up is is when your opponent is constantly laying down minions and bosses and all that stuff, and you're you know stuck with about you know twenty uh, right. action cards <laughs> right. in your hand, and you're right. like, what am I supposed to do? I can't win. Um, but I don't, you know, initially when we started playing this game, I felt like it was very similar to Smash Up in a way. Um, now I don't think they're anything alike, to be honest. Other than the fact you got bases in the middle of the field, they don't play yeah. nothing the same. Yeah. Um, and in fact, if I'm not a huge Smash Up fan. So when I first played this and I thought, oh god, this is somewhat like Smash Up, I was a little bit sour tasted. But um, 
Now that I've played it enough, no, they're, they're totally dissimilar, and, and I really like this game. Whereas Smash Up, yeah, I mean, I'll play, but I don't want to. Um, I gotta say, uh, just in case you were thinking like me, I mean, you're summoning dragons, so I had this thought in my head, it's gonna be very strategic, very tactical, like Mage Wars, mm, yeah. you know, but, yeah. but it's a lighter game, so keep that in mind, mm -hmm. that, you know, it is a lighter well, game. Well, it's a... You know, it is priced at a fifteen dollar game on Kickstarter right now. Right, so, right. Th this game. Well, let's. Okay, let me explain it to you this way. Okay, you don't want to necessarily create a game that has too much strategy because what it's going to end up doing is it's going to overstay its welcome, and that's what Smash Up does for me. It overstays its welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> what this game does, though, is it, it it gives you a game in about thirty minutes that has elements of luck and strategy, and everything feels pretty perfectly balanced because that game we just played, I had to edit out the last two. Uh, battles that we did because it ended up being uh, about 30 minutes total for that one whole uh, round and um, after we were done I was looking I was like wow that took 30 minutes to do that and it did not feel like no. that at all but keep in mind we were explaining a lot as we was going and that's why it takes extra time but it did not feel so it, went, it was a fast 30 minutes in my head and typically most of our games feel like a fast game right the other thing I want to talk about is that Whenever her and I have played, we played a game where we, the, the very first round, we tied on one battlefield, and you won the other two battlefields. And that was the first round. I felt like I was out of it. We flipped over the next two battlefields. We fought. I still came back to win the game. Yes. And, and that, to me, it shows is possible. perfectly yeah. balanced that there mm -hmm. is no, oh, well, you're... And on top of that, I want to I add, you ended up uh, scoring two additional advanced battle cards because you were successful mm -hmm. with two of your dragons that that allowed you to gain those but i was still able to bounce back and win that game so it does show that there is still some strategy luck and all that bounce out so final thoughts on the game i thought maybe i'll let you go first okay. and maybe you could give your uh well i just i really love the theme i mean it's really cool i feel like i'm in how to train your dragon <laughs> <The toothless. laughs> we need a toothless dragon we got these dragon pets <laughs> Black dragon, black dragon's <laughs> I just feel like that 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 makes it a lot of fun, and um, like I said, I I think I was expecting a heavier game. So if you go into it knowing that it's going to be a lighter game, then I think you'll really enjoy it. First. Okay, my final opinion of the game is I do actually like it. I like it quite a bit. In fact, um, it was not a game that instantly clicked with me because I like I said I thought there was too many similarities to Smash Up. But once I really started playing the game and and really just enjoying. What it is, it is a $15 game, and it is a game that I think that you have to keep in mind that um, you can't put too much strategy into a game like this because then it becomes too long, and just like Smash Up, it overstays its welcome. So it's got a great balance of luck, it's got a great balance of skill, and it just has that perfect balance of time added into it as well, to where you feel like, I played the game, it really didn't feel like that much time went by, and that's a good sign of a great game. Okay, the other thing I like about it too is, is the artwork, I think is absolutely gorgeous, so you like looking at the cards. I think that there's times when we're playing that, you know, you're just going to stare at the cards themselves and think, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's so pretty looking. <laughs> you know, um, I like the fact that we both have the exact same decks, that way we know that it's balanced, but yet I also like how the advanced battle cards are going to go into our battle decks, which is in a way a clock in the game because these things are so powerful, they are going to force an end game eventually. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.